So, okay, here's the rats, and this is from Yak Panksepp's work. Rat, he was the first guy who figured out that rats giggle. And you might think, well, what kind of stupid thing is that to study? It's like $50,000 research grant for giggling rats, you know? It's like, <laughs> but um, he discovered the play circuitry in mammals. That's a big deal, right? It's like discovering a whole new continent. There's a play circuit in mammals. It's built right in, so it's not socially constructed. There's a, there's a biological platform for that. And so what, what, what Panksepp would do with rats, he found out if rats, if you take a rat pup away from its mother, it dies. Even if you feed it, even if you keep it warm, it dies. Now you can stop it from dying by taking a pencil with an eraser on the end and massaging it. Right? Because rats won't live without love. And the same thing happens to human babies, and we, we saw that in Romania when there was that catastrophe after Ceausescu in the orphanages, where the orphanages were full of unwanted babies because Ceausescu insisted that every Romanian woman was constantly pregnant. So the orphanages stacked up with unwanted babies, and lots of them didn't even have names. And they were warehoused. Warmth, shelter, food. Devastating. Lots of them died. Most of them died before the first year. And the ones that didn't die were permanently dysfunctional, because... You have to be touched if you're a human being. It's not an option. You have to be played with. It's not an option. It's, it's part of neurodevelopmental necessity. And, and you have to also play fair. So, because otherwise you produce a very disjointed child who isn't able to engage in the niceties of social interaction, which is continual play in some sense and reciprocity. So what Panksepp did with his rats, he noticed that male rats, juveniles, really like to wrestle. And they wrestle just like Human beings wrestle, they pin each other for crying out loud. It's like, that, that rat has just lost, he's down for a 10 count, right? And so, so what you do is you take juvenile rats and you can find out that they want to play because huh, you can attach a spring to them and then they'll try to run and you can measure how hard they're running by how hard they're pulling on the spring and then you can estimate how motivated they are and so you can find out that a nice, well-fed rat who doesn't have anything on his mind will still work hard to play if it, to enter uh, an arena where he's been allowed to play before. He'll work for that. So then you think, well, the rat's motivated. So the two rats go out there and they play. And, and so they're, they're playing like dogs play. And everyone knows what that looks like. If, if, you're, you, know, if you have any sense about dogs, they kind of go like this. And kids do that. And maybe you do that with your wife if you're going to play with her a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> my, poor, my poor wife, man. When she... <laughs> <laughs> she was a... She was a, a, a a young, she had older siblings, and so she wasn't played with as much when she was little as she might have been. And um, I used to like, you know, if you take a pillow, eh, and you go like this three times, right? That means look out, a pillow is coming your way. So I'd go one, two, three, whap! And she, she looked, she was completely dismayed at me. She's like, what do you do that for? And I thought, well, I, I eventually taught her that rule. The other thing I used to do. <laughs> The other thing I used to do, you know, is she said, so sometimes she'd come at me like this when we were playing around, and I'd grab her wrists and I'd knock her, 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 her hands, her, her knuckles together, and she used to just get completely annoyed about that, and I thought, right? That's what you do, you just open your hands. Well, she didn't know that either, so she hadn't been played with enough when she was a little rat. And so, <laughs> anyways, uh, Anyway, so you let the, rat, the little rats go out there, right? And so let's imagine one of them is 10% bigger than the other. And so the, the 10% bigger rat wins. Because 10% is enough in rat weight to ensure that you're going to be the, the pinner rather than the pinny. Okay, so, so that's fine. So and the, the, rat, the, rat pins, the big rat pins the little rat. And now the big rat is the, is the authority rat. And so then the next time that the rats play... The little rat has to invite the big rat to play. So the big rat's out there being cool, and the little rat pops up and, you know, does the whole will you play with me thing, and the big rat will deign to play with them. But if you pair them repeatedly, unless the big rat lets the little rat win 30% of the time, the little rat will not invite him to play. And Panksepp discovered that. 
It's like I read that, that just blew me away. It's like, that is so amazing. Because you see, well, first of there, there's an analogy to Piaget's ideas about the emergence of morality out of play in human beings. So that was very cool. But the notion that that was built into rats at the level of wrestling was, and they're social, they're deeply social animals, right? They have to know how to get along with one another. And most of their authority disputes, dominance disputes, you don't want them to end in bloodshed and, and combat. Because, you know, if you're rat one and I'm rat two and we tear each other to shreds in a dominance dispute, rat three is just going to move in. It's really not a great strategy. And so it'd be better if we could settle our differences, you know, somewhat peacefully. And so, well, so rats... Anyways, Pankshep figured out that rats play. And not only do they play, they play fair and they seem to enjoy it. He also figured out, this was really cool too, that if you give juvenile rats attention deficit disorder drugs, Ritalin suppresses prey, play. So that's worth thinking about. It's like, well, why do you have to give juvenile human beings amphetamines in school? Well, because they need to play. Well, you don't, you don't get to play. They don't get to wrestle around. I mean, that's oppression as far as I can tell. They don't get to wrestle around. That's fine. Feed them some amphetamines, man. That'll shut down the old play circuits. Well, here's the other problem is Panksepp found out that if you don't let juvenile male rats play, their prefrontal cortexes don't develop properly. Surprise, surprise, you're not letting them mature. It's like, what else would you expect? So, you know, that's something to think about. Really hard, I would say. So, well, so there's some wolves going at it. Well, not exactly. There's some wolves... <laughs> <laughs> having an authority dispute, let's... <laughs> more technically speaking. Um, and a lot of it's posturing, you know, they, they tend, they tend not, well socialized wolves tend not to hurt each other during authority disputes because, well, for, for obvious reasons, it's too dangerous. And so they have other ways of, of demonstrating who should be listened to, authorities.